Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to use the java.io.objectOutput stream to help you create an object and flatten it out into a stream of bytes to then be written. You know, you can either persist it to a file or send it across a network. What's nice about this is once it's flattened out, later you can take that same flattened out stream of bytes and then recreate the object from it. What we're going to do here is create a new application and we'll just call this Object Output Test. Make this a generic application, hit Finish, and in here I'm going to right click on the project. Whoops, right here I'm going to right click on the project, say New Java Class. Now I'm going to create a person class and I need to make sure that it implements Java IO serializable. And that's because if you want to flatten something out into a stream of bytes, in order for you to do that, it has to be serializable. Let's just hit OK. OK, so now what we want to do for our person is create a couple attributes. Maybe we'll put in here a first name and a last name. Of course, I need to put the data type in here. It's a string. And let's right click, generate the getters and setters, these accessors right here. And let's add one more method in here, maybe do a public string to string so we can nicely print out our person. Like that. So now that our person is created, let's create a main program that's going to use this. So right click, Java class, and we'll just call this person test. Put a main method in there. And now inside here, we're going to instantiate a person. I only created uh, one constructor in there, the default constructor. So I'm going to call the uh, setter name. We'll put in here Joe. And Schmo. Here we have it, Joe Schmo. OK, and uh, now the next thing we need to do we're going to be working with our I.O. package, so we'll just say import java.io.star. And now we want to use our Java I.O. package, and so I'm pulling up the API docs here. Here's our object output stream. Okay, let's check out our methods here. And you'll see if we scroll down, we have the object, uh, let's see here. We have a write object where we pass in the object. Let's take a look at the constructors. Our constructor here takes as its argument an output stream. Well, if we're going to be writing to a file, what choices do we have? Oh, we can do a file output stream. Now, the reason why we use the classes that have the word stream instead of writer is because stream has to do with the stream of bytes, whereas writer has to do with characters. OK, so here's our file output stream. Here's the constructor. You can pass in the name of the file. OK, so with that being said, let's go ahead and create this. So I'm going to say object output stream OOS equals new object output stream. And then in here, we're going to say new file output stream. And in quotes here, we're going to put the name of the file. So here I'm going to make sure I do double backslash here. We'll just put that as the directory. And what is the name of the file? Let's just do uh, person.dat. And there we go. Now we're getting this right here. We need to surround this with a try catch. That looks good. And now we need to do something with this. So if I say OOS dot write object, we can pass in our object right here. Maybe in our catch we want to print out something uh, meaningful, or at least a stack trace, some kind of message. And then of course we can put a finally block in here to finally close our resources. And in here we can say OOS dot close. Now this might fail for some reason, so of course we want to put this inside of a try catch. So let's do try 
catch. We'll just do a generic exception right in here. Okay, just right click, reformat this so it looks a little bit better. And now we're going to run this. Let's right click and run it. Okay, this is not a problem. Variable OOS might not have been initialized. So it's complaining about this right here. You'll see that it was declared up here, but all we need to do is say up here that it's null. Now let's run it again. And exit code of zero, which means everything was successful. And let's look at our local file system. You'll see here, here's my Firebox training directory and there is our person.dat. It is a binary file. You'll see that uh, everything looks good. Now, the only way we can read this is to create an object from it again. Okay, so now I'm going to create yet another Java class, and we'll just call this object read test. We'll put a main method in here. And let's import java.io.star. And we're now going to, once again, create that object stream, but this time it's going to be an object input stream. So let's look at our documentation real quick here. We have object input stream. It takes this constructor takes as its argument an input stream. Let's see here, we have a file input stream. Let's look at the constructor there, and you'll see that we can pass in the string name. So what we're going to do is say object input stream equals new object input stream. And here we'll say new file input stream and here the name of the file. So remember it was C Firebox Training person.dat. Okay, now let's click on here, surround with the try catch, looking good so far. Let's make sure that we initialize this to uh, set that to null. I have a slight typo here. This needs to be file input stream. Okay, so now what can we do with this? Well, let's see. Now let's go ahead and read this. So OIS dot read object. You'll see that it returns an object and then we can uh, downcast it appropriately. So if I say, for example, uh, person P1 equals, and let's just cast it like this. Add exceptions to the method header. We can put it up here, throws class not found exception, or we can do another catch down here. Okay. You can put your own handling in there. Now I just want to print out the information about my person. So I'll say system.out.println p1. Of course, we want to close our resources. Let me just reformat this so it looks nice. And we'll put a finally block down here. And of course, you want to put this inside of a try catch. Reformat this again. Looks a lot better. Okay, so just to make this a little more friendly. Let me just copy this. Paste it right in here and paste it right in here and now reformat it. Let's give this a whirl. Now, you'll see that it gave us null. What's the problem? Well, let's take a closer look here. Ooh, we have a typo. Okay, let's go ahead and change that again. 
And now we'll run it again. You'll see here that we've got Joe Schmo. So there we have it. We use the object output stream to flatten out an object to be persisted. And then we use the object input stream to go the opposite direction. I hope you've learned a lot from this video tutorial. Please visit us at www.fireboxtraining.com.